Welcome to California on Sasquatch, a not finding Bigfoot special. Bigfoot Days 2014. We're in Willow Creek, California, Bigfoot Ground Zero. Today, it's a Bigfoot parade. Everyone in town comes out, lines the streets, while firemen throw candy at children's faces. Do you believe in Sasquatch? Oh, I'm a believer. You are a believer. Have you I've had heard him? him. Oh, no. I didn't see him, but I heard his growl. Have you seen one of these creatures? Yes. You have? Yes. And you believe? Yes. I have seen one. You've seen one? Yes. No really actual Bigfoot. We have not actually touched one or right. seen the hair, caught fur, or looked at poop. The legend behind it, do you think there's something to it? Possibly. He doesn't exist, and all the people that say he does are, I think, stoned. We don't do drugs. I've seen two Bigfoot in my, my life. Wow. One about 15 years ago, one about three years ago. I think I was seven. You were seven? Yeah. Okay. And it was just a brief scene. Um, it was like more like a shadow. Probably was about five feet from the outside of our shed. It made a, a loud, kind of like a... He's about six feet, and it's about three feet taller than him, and... Just, it was very, very wide. And the bushes came up to about here to him, and they were about this tall. So it was wow. nine plus feet tall, real muscular, real human looking face. They call him Tintak Yun Ho Yan in Hoopa. Tintak Yun Ho Yan. Tintak Yun Ho Yan. There used to be a tribe of hairy Hoopa Indians that lived downriver, and they were big. His face is a man's face. I think. Maybe somewhere in the deep woods there are still some people hidden. And the ones that people are seeing that are like six, eight feet tall, those are teenagers. He's out there. Yes. Can all these people be lying to us? No. No. Oh, no. hold on, candy. Get out of the way. Why do you come to the Bigfoot days? Just the only, only thing they have going in during the summer. Oh, I think we got a spotting. Yeah, that's a Bigfoot. Pin her! Put her on the ground! We decided to come to the Willow Creek China Flats Museum. It's a museum here in Willow Creek, which has an entire room dedicated to Bigfoot shit. My lady Patty from the Patterson Gimlin film, we notice a very humanoid face, floppy breasts indicating this is a female. Here's a diorama. Remember making these in sixth grade? A lot of people will look at that and see nothing, but uh, I've seen everything there is to see here at the Bigfoot Museum. Now, Kasim was a curious fellow. He wasn't one to let a mystery go unsolved. He needed to keep digging. So he set out to find more information from the local people and to refuel on drinks and snacks. At the base of the backside of Little Bald Rock Dome, there was another rock formation. The Indians called it Fertility Rock. And mm. there were several rocks that stood up out of the ground in Shaped kind like of a penises. half circle, yes. Yeah. And it almost looks like a small stone hinge. It was misty and it was still pouring rain. But I saw something on the top of that rock and it was looking at us. And it moved. And it moved in a way that was not human, that was wild. There were four of us in the pickup truck and they all saw what I saw. That tall shape looked at us, it had very long arms, it swung around and it took one step up over a rock and then one step down and was up and down out of sight. What the hell was that? In the meantime, I'll just take two of these. Okay. Thanks for the okay. thanks for the story, Deborah. You're welcome. Okay. I hope you find some nice squatchy areas to Thank take you. care of. Thank you. We're gonna squatchy so hard. Okay. <laughs> With his curiosity peaked and dried meat snack in hand, Casim set off for more answers. All right, I'm here with Mike Rugg, the proprietor of the Bigfoot Discovery Museum here in Felton, California. Hello, Mike, how are you? I'm doing good. Thanks for joining us. And it looks like looking around here, you know a thing or two about squatches. I wanted to uh, establish a location that would attract people who had some knowledge uh, or wanted some knowledge about Bigfoot. We actually have a, a piece of evidence that may blow the lid off the whole thing once it gets tested. Is here? A tooth that was found locally. Six dentists looked at it, told me it looks like a human upper molar, but it's way too big. It's actually about twice the size of my molar, which is right there. This is your molar for, for scale. Wow, you are a trooper. There's two tests, major tests that have been done recently, and both of them had pieces of our tooth and neither of them sequenced. And now they're arguing about it and it's all gone to hell and all the tests are being denied. And all they have to do is take our tooth 
tested, guys. If anyone's gonna find Bigfoot, it's gonna be the guy that pulls out his own teeth for comparison. Guys, make sure if you're in the area to check out the Bigfoot Discovery Museum here in Felton. They work on donations and there's a lot of cool stuff. If you're nice enough, he'll sell you some stuff that he won't normally sell to people. I'm gonna pick up this bad boy, add it to my collection. Thanks, Mike. Okay. Hopefully this won't be the last time you see me. Kasim went seeking answers, but he only left with more questions. And a limited edition Bigfoot action figure with footprint stamp and ink pad. Pretty cool. These are notes about the things that have been interesting so far on our trip. Uh, a few personal notes, you know. What was up with that tooth? It's weird. That was pretty weird, Ricky. Pulled out molars aside, the boys needed to seek out a professional, someone with a degree. I'm Dr. Jeff Meldrum. I'm a professor of anatomy and anthropology at Idaho State University. I house what is literally the largest collection of footprint cast material relating to Sasquatch and other relic hominoids uh, that exists anywhere in the world. I'd heard the stories of Sasquatch, seen pictures in the newspaper and elsewhere of, of footprints, but to actually witness them in the ground, this really caused me to think about this whole question in a very different, very serious way. We made it to Pocatello. Jeff uh, gave us an invite to his world-renowned laboratory. I enlisted the help of local Pocatellian Shea Carl. The most famous footage ever shot of Bigfoot is the Patterson-Gimlin film up Correct. in uh, Bluff Creek. These are right and lefts. These were cast by Paul Freeman. Patty's That's, foot, huh? That's Patty's foot. That's crazy. So people so. send you hairs. Right. And uh, they send them to you in, in hopes that you can identify whether they're bear right. or... Uh, Coyote. Or... Right. But we have these um, recurring examples of hair that, that don't uh, uh, readily lend themselves to attribution to some other, some other common and species. And you have more than one of these. Yeah. This is what we think is Sasquatch. You have one thing here I want to see before I go. You told me about it was an ass print. Yeah. Let's see it. <laughs> Let's see it. Oh, Look at that booty. oh boy. I've seen I've seen some photos that that uh, resemble this very closely. Oh man. But you know, when I was shown this, I couldn't rest restrain uh, a chuckle. I laughed. Yeah. You've got to be kidding. Okay, can you sh tell me what I'm looking at? Here? Well, that's just it. He, the, the fellow who showed it to me, he said, "I don't know, you know, yeah. where where which way does it go?" And I looked at it and I said, "Oh my gosh. Oh, like There's it. the tailbone. Oh. The coccyx, you know. Yeah. It comes back uh -huh. and then right in the right place relative to the, the coccyx, that's the sphincter, as yeah. we say in anatomy. <laughs> Here are the cheeks. You can actually see hair, the, the striations yeah. of hair streaming. Oh my god. The imprint of hair. She had and a then hairy butt. Smooth skin on the on the cleft. The the gluteal folds then. She has that little bit of a and I assume you you know you were probably right. It is a she. There's maybe the suggestion there of labia. Kasim had learned everything he could from the experts. But he knew there was a knowledge out there that he couldn't learn from scientists or books or reality TV shows. Kasim's destiny laid in the forest, where he hoped to see the beast firsthand. But before entering the wilderness, Kasim needed to assemble a team. Kasim G, number one booger, Sasquatch, Bigfoot hunter. My name's Omar Garaba. I'm a producer here on this Bigfoot trip, and I'm the little brother advisor. My name's Ricky Mamone, and I'm a producer. I'm Lane Pavogi, and I'm a Bigfoot videographer. Hi, I'm Ron, and uh, I'm not exactly sure why I uh, am on this trip. I'm George Kimmel, and I'm one of the producers on this epic adventure. My name is John Nod and I'm a cameraman on this Bigfoot misadventure. Everyone else kind of has a job and stuff. The plan for the next few days is to camp out in the Pacific Northwest, setting up base camp, uh, surveying over two nights, using thermal cams, night vision cams, sound recording equipment, to possibly capture an image of a Bigfoot or a vocalization. Do you believe in Bigfoot? No. Yes. Yes. No. It's not real. I have two concerns, and they're contradictory. One is that we don't see Bigfoot, and it's all for nothing. And the other is that we do see Bigfoot, and Omar gets his arms ripped off. I don't know what we'd do if we found a Bigfoot. I, I would be pretty pleased to see one. I'd like to think I'd be very stoked. I don't think it's important at all. I think it's a complete waste of time. Why do you think this is important to Castle? 
think he's just really bored, and uh, I don't know. He's he's accomplished a lot so far, and you know sometimes when you do a lot, you have to go backwards. your eyes feel for squatches crossing fields. Just because it's not nighttime doesn't mean they're not out there. Do they live in high elevation and then come down at night to feed near the water sources where yeah. the animals they, they are? sleep uh, on ridges and then they feed at night. Where we're going, it's, it's actually an intersection of four different valleys. Streams, game trail, it really is the perfect spot. I've never seen anyone take something so obviously fake so seriously. There's lots of reports of squatches being seen together. Traditionally, that's more the mother juvenile. Generally, if you run into a female, that's a pretty rare occurrence. Because okay. you know you're probably around some juveniles or a nest sometime. Huh. If I ran into a female, I'd like try and be her baby. Everyone is so gung-ho about this whole thing. and. They're just clouded by Kasim's excitement and they can't see the real truth, which is that we're just going out there to find a bear. Don't fear, John. An easy tip for dealing with bears is to play dead. Or is it raise your arms and scream? Hmm. Either way, our young explorers were off. Summer of 97, I had a sighting in uh, Nevada County, California. It came down the canyon all the way into my campsite. And in fact, it was probably three feet away. It was uh, very terrifying at first, but after it was all over with, it was more curiosity than anything else. I spent many years researching researchers, what they were doing in the field, why they could not film these in the wild. And this is how the Falcon Project came along. Well, the Falcon Project which is the brainchild of uh, William Barnes, is a strategy to use aerial surveillance to try to locate, track, and study the Sasquatch. The last resort I think we have in research is from there because on the ground we're still in the same place as we were 50 years ago. Guys, this is uh, William Barnes, Bigfoot expert. He's gonna be the one leading us through this week's expedition. Thanks for uh, having us out here. Can you tell us what the next two days is going to be like as far as what we can expect to see in here? Well, hopefully we'll see something. When I watch Finding Bigfoot, I feel like every episode they're finding something. Can we expect to go out and achieve as much success as a typical episode of Finding Bigfoot? If you say there's, that's a squatch every time you hear something, yes. Yeah. So what time do we get going Bigfoot hunting? Uh, probably around 10, 11 o'clock. Till when? About 5, 6 in the morning. When do you sleep? daytime. So we're just like them. Yes. Hey, so since this is our Bigfoot show, you got to have that obligatory map over the hood shot. Can you tell us what the plan is maybe, where you're going to spread us out tonight here? Tonight we'll go along the riverbed upstream where the okay. canyon opens up more. Mm -hmm. You get to see more land and also you can see more river of the, because of the corners. Okay. That's our map shot. We're going to go set up this bait cam. Let's do it. Before the night's surveillance, the team had to scout a location for their gifting basket, a unique way of building trust with those who call the forest home. We picked our location for our gifting. What we got here is some liver, some pork chitlins that we're going to leave out here. Oh, this is disgusting. This is a hell of a gift basket, wouldn't you say, William? Just like a buffet. Just like a buffet. Well, we're all set. I will be the first image this cam sees, but hopefully not the last. I'm really excited for tonight because apparently in this area, according to Mr. William Barnes, there's one to three Bigfoot within a 200 square mile radius of where we're at. So we've got a good position right next to the creek the bottom of this ridge. I feel like if uh, anyone's gonna get a chance to see it tonight, it's gonna be us. The adventurers made plans to split up into three groups for the overnight surveillance. Team Kasim, Team Omar, and going solo for the overnight mission, Team Run. God help them. 
I'm just really on one mission tonight. I'm on a mission to A, capture the Squatch, B, keep John Na safe. John Na, are you going to be able to survive with me? Uh, probably. We'll survive. We'll survive. We'll just be scared all the time. I have a gun because I'm a little scared of, of bears. And, I mean, even a rabbit would probably scare me. I'm, feel, I'm actually that jumpy right now. I wouldn't kill it, no. If it came after me or one of my crew, you know I'm busted caps. If one did come through and we all seen it, we all filmed it, even though the public say it wasn't true, at least we all know it was. Yeah. You know, that's all that counts. Forget about the rest of the people. Right. Um, let them take it as a grain of salt. It's your experience. Yep. And that's what, you know, that's what I want. Look, I don't have any expectations about what I hope to see tonight, but if I don't see a Bigfoot, I will be disappointed. As the darkness settled in, the team prepared for the ascent into the wilderness. They had many questions. Would Kesem's research pay off? Would Mother Nature show them her greatest secret? Would John become a fluffy Korean snack for the hungry bears? The answers lay in the dense, unforgiving forest. We just got done getting all our gear together and uh, I think we're feeling pretty excited. Some of us are gonna be alone, like Ron. You gonna handle that, buddy? Yeah, yeah, I'm good. I, uh, Thanks, man. Don't <laughs> envy you. Reason you're seeing everything in black and white is because we're using the infrared on these cameras, so you're not gonna see any color. At least you'll see. We're gonna stop by that bait cam and see if anything's happened, so let's check it out. Ooh, that smells. Still there. Oh, there's a huge little critter on it. Look Whoa. at the size of that beetle. Doesn't look like they're into the chitlins. The floor is very crunchy. Indy, Indy, why the floor crunchy? Indiana Jones. The more land that you can see, open, open spots, uh -huh. the better off you are. Okay. And there is a tree line up there, which okay. is good. Do we want to be up against the tree line? Well, you want to be up on the edge like this. Okay. And okay. looking. Okay. Like a sniper has a vantage point. Right. And that's all you want. This is just surveillance, all it is. Okay, cool. So we just arrived to spot one. This is where I will be calling home tonight. Be an old spot. <sighs> I'm sweaty. And I'm... I smell kind of bad. It's so quiet out here. I can't hear anything. I can't hear bugs. All I can hear is just the shuffling of my own clothes. It is insane how dark it is. If I look out this way, I don't see anything at all. I literally can't see my foot. Shit. It's important that Rick does those scans because we are sitting ducks out here. We do have a great vantage point, but we are at the bottom of a ridge. And uh, we don't want to have any surprise bears or mountain lions. I'm even afraid of bigger sized rabbits. So uh, it's good to know that we're safe for at least a little bit. Fuck, why did we agree to do this? I'm gonna try and listen to absolutely nothing for a few hours, see what we come up with. I'm just gonna do some surveillance here and uh, see if I can pick up some good data. We heard some sticks break over to our right it felt far away maybe 100 yards 150 yards away i actually don't know how far that is i don't know yards really okay nothing i guess saw a UFO <laughs> and uh <laughs> now we gotta go <laughs> we're, we're, we're laughing at him <laughs> we're out here looking for Bigfoot <laughs>
Okay, good. We thought we lost you to an abduction. Please uh, stay safe and we'll, uh, we'll let you know right before the tree dock here in a few minutes. I did get visual evidence on an unidentified flying object. Since I don't know what it is, I am going to classify it as unidentified. Since it was flying, I'm going to classify it as flying. And since I know it was an object of some kind, it's a UFO. We've been here for an hour. We pretty much heard nothing. But at the same time, we might not be at a good spot. John and I are thinking about changing locations, but are too terrified to move. After our first radio check, I think William Barnes suggested that we move up 100 yards. And we were nestled in pretty good at where we were at. And there was no fucking way we are moving. No fucking way. No way. I'm a married man, and I'm fucking scared. And in the next hour before the next radio call, I think we just may try some uh, tree knocks, mainly because we're bored. Copy that. Pink Owl will definitely be doing the tree knocks. Over. Tree knocks are basically knocking on the trees. As some people think the Bigfoot communicate this way. All right, we just heard gunshots. No, that was a tree knock. Was that a tree knock? That was definitely a tree knock. That sounded like gunshots. That's weird. I would have for sure thought that was gonna work. A tree knock did nothing. Real solid tree knock. Looks like uh, Omar and John are super bored, so they're gonna try a vocalization. A vocalization is basically you're trying to call to Sasquatch by uh, yelling out sounds. Hopefully, maybe he'll call back. Um, probably, most likely not. It sounded like a female. Let's just say, let's just put it that way. Uh, pretty heavy set female. You just hear like a, hey Rick. What would be terrifying is if you just heard like, we waited a few seconds, then you heard one, and then you heard another, and then you just kept hearing a bunch, and the tree started shaking. <laughs> Earlier, uh, William Barnes was saying that he's never heard Sasquatch, so that leads me to believe that there's no reason to even do vocalizations. So a couple times we attempted to do some tree knocks and some vocalizations. There's no science there. That's just stuff I saw on the show, Finding Bigfoot. The sound of George's stream, his urine stream, was probably the loudest thing I've heard all night. I'm way too scared to walk, so I'm gonna just take a piss right here. Does the Bigfoot smells our pee? Maybe that could be an advantage. I know that it'll scare the bears away because it's our territory. But at the same time, I'm willing to take that risk. We were talking about what we think Bigfoot's dig might, might look like. And uh, I, I like to think it's huge and it's furry on the inside. You'd have to think that that dig is going to be running into all kinds of shrubbery and hitting all kinds of bark comes out. I think they could have 50 inch cocks. Of course, this is on the inside, but it has like a very fleshy part that comes out, kind of like a dark cocks are so big. There are probably other organisms living on their cock. And that's symbiotic. I think it'd be really something to be the first people to capture Bigfoot's dick on thermal. One of my deepest fears is being alone in the woods. And I'm so glad you're with me, Omar. We did hear an owl hoot. Now, some people believe that uh, Bigfoot can mimic other animal sounds. William, do you have a feeling about that? It's a possibility. It's a possibility. It's all it's all a fucking possibility. No. No, it's not. Hey, what's up, William? I'm scared for my life too. We're in a pretty spooky graveyard that we came across. I don't know, it's just pretty spooky. So we're gonna do some impromptu ghost hunting. We're gonna use the thermal cam here and 
see if we can pick up any any spirits, any uh, energy trying to manifest into a physical uh, apparition. We got all the tools we need, I guess. Did you find anything? It's okay. real hot right in that, that middle area right Whoa, there. Dude. That's very hot. That's too hot. Yeah, this whole, this whole little area here. Oh, God. Thought that was a spooky ghost. With John and Omar crippled with fear and Kasim now ghost hunting, it was clear this mission was in jeopardy. Time was running out and still no definitive evidence. This is Red Eagle. We're here in the sound that sounds like a duck. Any idea what that might be? That's most certainly a Bigfoot, Ron. I hope you move in to investigate. We heard a similar noise as well. I definitely heard a creature somewhere going through the bushes, so I'm gonna go in and investigate. Let's see what we got. I heard a very, very clear noise, and I was prompted by Cassim uh, and Mr. Barnes to chase after the noise with a camera, uh, which I did. It's in here somewhere. Fuck. So it uh, looks like John and Omar heard some footsteps. John made it sound like it was coming our way because he's up the creek that way. So we're listening in. Ricky's on thermal sync if we can catch anything. I'm hearing very low growling noises towards the ridge across from us. Copy that. We've got some audible sound. There's some creature definitely, definitely in there. I'm going in, uh, get visual contact if I can. And uh, the great thing is that I'm not scared at all. You hear me? Do you have any updates? Uh, no visual contact so far. I didn't get any auditory evidence that it was a creature fleeing, so I feel like uh, it may have been something that was quite good at stealth or quite good at hiding and just simply stayed put while I was searching around possibly something that didn't even have a fear of humans. At any moment, you're at the mercy of Mother Nature. And Mother Nature can be a cruel beast in the form of a mountain cat, a bear, or uh, something more sinister. You're just constantly vulnerable to that. You really realize how small and insignificant you are in this world. And once you accept that, you gain a sort of power. I think that I've really gained a courage that I didn't have before, uh, before I came. I really found my manhood last night. And it's big. It's very interesting to see, see younger people, at least a younger generation, looking at this field of work. Because it has to be passed along anyway, because if we never figure out what they are, at least we can pass on the research to younger generations to keep the work going. You have to love the journey as well as anticipate the arrival at the destination. And I encourage people to hone their skills, to become familiar with their neck of the woods. In the Bigfoot community, you have different groups attacking different groups of different opinions. Well, the only opinion I have, I know they're real. And in the end, the boys came up empty in their search. Or did they? One could argue that Castle and his team found themselves on that mountain. They also scored a bag of mushrooms on that last day, so it wasn't a total bust. <laughs>